Hey guys, this is Rob. So I've had a lot of requests to show start to finish an electrical Revit project. Now that's a huge task and it would take, you know, hours to indicate that. So what I've decided to do, and this is the first video in a series of a full electrical project. So I've decided to do a residential scale project, but design it as a commercial project. So what I mean is it will be a small square footage in only two levels, but we will draw it and circuit it and detail it as if it's a commercial level of detail. So kind of a hybrid project, but it should show a lot of the techniques used in commercial work and you can apply it to residential work as well. So stay tuned. This is only video one. There's going to be a number of videos uh, coming out over the next few weeks that add on to this. This first one will show how to analyze an architectural model and then get that linked into a brand new from scratch electrical model. And I'm going to be using as much of the out of the box templates and families as I can so that you can follow along without needing a bunch of custom content. So if that interests you, stick around. And if you get something out of it, of course, hit that like, um, subscribe for more. I've got a bunch more coming up after this. So hang on for this ride and thanks for watching. So here we are in Revit 2023. And what we need to do is find an architectural model that we can use as a starting point to add our electrical to. So what I've decided to do is use an architectural model that can be found on the Autodesk website that is free to use. And if you just go to uh, your browser and do Autodesk sample projects, and let's get a 2023 in there to get the right version because there's a few different ones. And go to sample files right here. And you see we're in the Autodesk Revit 2023 help. This also points out there's quite a few help topics in here that you can go through as you're learning. But right here, Revit sample project files. They also have sample family files and, and these kind of things. Let's go to sample projects. And right here, this is a basic sample project. And it is a residential style home. And it's got two levels to it. And it has a sunken living room here. So that's a good sample project to work on. Now, I must say that Revit is typically used electrically for commercial industrial work, not so much on residential because residential typically doesn't require the level of connectivity and detail in those plans that a commercial project would. A lot of contractors and electricians will self-design the electrical system. And frankly, I don't know how far they take their designs on paper, if you will, you know, they would have to do some kind of design to decide what circuits things connect to, things like that. So what I'm going to do is treat this residential project like a commercial level of detail, just to show how it's done on a small project, a small footprint. So with that being said, we're going to download this rev residential project. Now you can see there's other commercial projects. And in fact, in 2024, they have a complete commercial project, multi-story, multi-family, with full HVAC, plumbing, structural, architectural, electrical, everything that I will also be covering eventually. But that's a big project. So I wanted to show how this can be done on a smaller level. So let me go ahead. You go ahead and just download that RAC basic sample project. And I've already done that. So let's get back into Revit 2023. First thing I like to do is open the architectural model to see how it's built, see how it's put together. And I've relabeled this to get the right, to get the version into it. I like to know what version it is. I mean, you can see it in here in the thumbnail. It'll tell you what version it is. But that's only if I'm looking at this while I'm in Revit. If I'm outside and just explore and looking for projects, I can't tell what they are. So here's advanced, here's basic sample project. That is what we're looking for. That is the architectural version. Let us just open that up. No, it's not too huge. It only takes a second to open. And I want to get a, you know, an overview. You want to get an overview of your 
project architecturally so you know what you're going to be designing. Now, this lesson mainly deals with how to use Revit to document your plans, but it'll also encounter some design issues. So here we go, here is a site plan, which is of course a view looking from the sky down. And we can see that here's the north arrow pointing up and our building is somewhat tilted. It's not straight up and down north. And this here is some kind of a solar analysis to see how much light is coming into that project as well as how well it hits their solar panels. And then we have a little bit of a planting schedule. So that's, that's the site plan. Now, if we decide to do our own site plan, let's say we want to do a site plan that shows a connection out here to the solar panels or some other, you know, bringing service in from the utility, we might need a site plan to do that. And this is a good idea of, you know, what kind of tilt it might have if we really want to show it this way. Now, we can always turn this and show it vertical. And then here's some other plans. These are the floor plans, a level one floor plan and a level two floor plan. Like I mentioned, it's a two-story building, two-story house. We have a kitchen dining. We've got the typical hall with a little mechanical room, a bathroom and laundry, and then one large living space. And then on the second floor, we've got the bedrooms, master bedroom, bedroom. It's a linen closet, bathrooms. We've got three baths up there and the entry hall and just a deck up here. So not a huge house, a nice project to start on to show the basics and then they include elevations and sections which are nice for us to see how this thing's put together so we have those more elevations and sections now as we get into electrical design and drafting we're going to be studying these a little more to see some of the details like we'll want to see you know where does the architect want the lights you can see, kind of see that this is a sunken living room. This is down a little bit lower than up there. So we'll have to look at that. That will affect the mounting height of some of our equipment. And then they have construction details like sections and such. And these are actually interesting because these are, if we look into these sections, we'll find out that these are actually walls and railings and so that someone didn't just draw detail lines and, and create the sketch of this. This is actually a section cut through the building and these are actually building elements within this model that are cut and then just labeled. So that's another, of course, benefit to using Revit in lieu of a CAD program. And here's just some more sections to get an idea what things look like. We've got a walkway, we've got all kinds of interesting things in this project. So that gives us an idea of what's going on. And then if you want to get further, you can get to the views themselves because these are just sheets that have views dragged onto them. We want to get into the views themselves. You can do it from here. If you open, expand each of these sheets, you will see the individual pieces. And this one, here's a schedule. Now here's the 3D view. Here's the site plan. Let's go to actual plans. Floor plan level one and floor plan level two. You can also get to these views and pieces individually up here, the same stuff, um, sorted by name. Now, this brings up an interesting point that there's a lot to be said about organizing this project browser, and every firm, every person has their own preference. So you'll find different kinds of organization. This one is more of a out-of-the-box style Revit organization, but just note that this will vary project to project. The filled in box just means that that view has been dragged onto a sheet and is being used. And you can turn that on and off if you don't want those boxes. But let us go to level one and start looking at the details of this. As you can see, it's all individual pieces. These are, these are model groups of chairs. This is an actual casework. We have doors, which are pieces. We have windows, walls. We have furniture, that there is a furniture, a table, a dining table. So it's just all a bunch of pieces. And what's unique about consultants, uh, electrical, mechanical, even structural, is that we take this architectural model that's a bunch of pieces and we link it into our model and it comes in as one giant piece. 
So we can't actually highlight the individual pieces as easy. There's a way to do it, but it's not, it's all kind of one piece. They've got some collection tanks, you know, mechanical. We don't have HVAC or plumbing designed for this project. So that's one drawback on this project. I can't show how we would collaborate and coordinate with those other trades. You can link other trades in and see their equipment. You can see their ductwork and pipework so we can avoid it. We don't have that. So we're going to miss that step, but we will at least get through all of the electrical connections and we will assume some mechanical units and things like that. Again, a basic project just to show some of the basics and not get too complicated. I think the most complicated piece of this project will be that sunken living room. And that's only complicated because of Revit things like levels. Let's look at how that works. Now, in these plans, they've turned off their section cuts. You can't see the section symbol. So we will have to just find those ourselves. But here's a building section. And this is one that has that sunken living room. And what you want to look at here in sections is these things called levels. And if you recall, levels are actually a, an entity within Revit. Uh, that determines what a view is based upon. What I mean is this level one is actually a physical thing in the model that a plan can be hosted to or attached to this level. It's, it's related to this level. And once you set that plan up for that level, you can't change it. So think about these levels as you have these little circles on the side. that, And if it's blue, it just means that there is a, a plan view set up for that level. This level is being used for a plan. So we've got, they've only done it with two levels. These other levels now may be used for other constraints, um, you know, maybe used for other purposes. But as far as what plans were done, it's just these two. Now we're going to have to copy these levels into our own electrical model so that we have those levels. We need those levels to create our plan. Now, we may not need a roof plan because in, in this residential project, it's just a gable roof. There's no platform up here with, a, with mechanical equipment on it, for example, like you might find in a commercial space. But it's still good to have a top limit in your model that we can relate to as far as view range, which we'll get into. But that's how that's set up. So, And the other thing I'll notice, too, is that this project was done in metric. These are all millimeters. Now we can still use this in our Imperial US based project. So this is sunk in about two feet down below. And they did not create a separate plan view with that level. Some architects will. And so they would have this floor plan split into two pieces one piece with the upper level and another piece with lower level. And then maybe combine them on the sheet somehow. But in this case, they've just decided to keep it all level one. And what they've done is, even though this plan view is set up as level one, and when, over here under extents, we're actually looking at the floor plan. So under extents, you will see associated level right here on the right. It is the level it's associated with is level one, the entire thing. And so what they've done is the plan is set at level one and the view range, if you recall the view range is a bottom, a cut and a top primarily. They have it set up for these kind of levels. The bottom is actually the level below. The cut plane is at this level above the associated level and the top is hard set at this above the associated level. So they've got their cut plane established, but the bottom is the level below, which in this case ends up being that lower level living room. So even up here, we can see down below, but there's, since there's no basement in this, it, it doesn't obscure things. But we'll get into view range a little more then. But the things that are in this sunken living room are actually, as you will see, hosted to level one living room. So even though our view is set up for level one, you can actually mount or host objects to the other levels. So it ends up being 
hosted to level one living room with a zero elevation from that level. If we were to host this to our level one, then it would need a negative offset to be down. So you can see what I'm talking about. It gets a little complicated when you have different levels, but it's something that uh, eventually you'll need to deal with and learn. Other things, this whole living room could have its own view range. There's a way to do that. But anyway, this is how they've set it up. So we will mimic what they've done. Now here we can actually see the sections. So click on a section, and this is a section looking this way through the house. And again, you can see things like we've got, we've got the elevation. We can see the kind of the elevation of the kitchen. And you click on that, and that is a dishwasher. We'll need to know these appliances. A lot of times an architect will actually maybe do an enlarged view of this kitchen and point these things out to us. So it looks like a cooktop. You'll find as an electrical designer, you're going to be trying to figure out what are all these pieces because the architect didn't explicitly call them out. Luckily, here in Revit, we can click on things and see that it's an actually, well, they've got an induction cooktop. They may have a basis of design model number that you have to look up to figure out what the load is. But a lot of things, at least um, residentially, are kind of a typical. We put an outlet in for the range, for example, let's say a 50 amp outlet at 240. And it doesn't matter what model of range it is. Unless it's some special thing that needs, you know, 60 or 100 amp outlet. But in this case, we're going to assume it's all standard stuff. Same with the laundry. How are these set up in the laundry? They're not called out. We can click on that and see that it's the washing machine. As you walk in, it's on the right. And on the left is a dryer. So that's good to know. Again, we have no mechanical equipment called out here. Also in our electrical model, we'll be able to cut our own sections and elevations and look at things as well. So mainly from this model, again, I got the levels that I need to deal with. They're dealing with two plans. They're at, well, it's one to 100, so we'll have to figure out what that is for us. They have the site plan that's angled, and we may have to figure out how that's done. They are using a topographic surface. They're using actual model trees. They've actually modeled pieces. Now, why I bring that up is doing electrical work, you'll find out that a lot of architects do not model a site plan. And for some reason, they may just draw some, some detail lines on here, uh, especially when you have commercial work with parking lots and such. It may be done with detail lines. The curbs are just detail lines. Well, those pieces don't show up in a link. So we'll link in and link in their model and look at the parking lot and it'll be blank because those were detail lines, not model lines or not curbs and things that are actually in the 3D model. So this is nice that this stuff is actually modeled so it will show up into our linked plan. So that's a note to you architects, anyone watching. So I think we know enough about this architectural model to go ahead and put that into our project. So let's close out of this. We have to be out of it to link, to link it, and we don't need to save the changes. So let's start a new project. Oh, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to do this using the out-of-the-box templates and families. Now, that will be a struggle sometimes, as you'll see, but we're going to try it. So let's use their, in, the, in this version, we have an Imperial Systems template. So systems, MEP systems. So we're going to use that template to start our electrical project. Now, why it's called systems, what makes it special? Well, mainly because they have some views set up already. Over on the left, you see they've got some lighting views, power views, mechanical HVAC. They've got plumbing views. So that's one piece that makes this an MEP template. And they may have loaded some families. They may have done some settings. If you go to manage and look at MEP settings, they may have gone in here and got some things set up for us. And let's look at the electrical settings. This is a whole dialog box of all the behind the scenes stuff that Revit does, but you know, some of the wiring may be set up and they may have voltage definitions in here, even distribution systems. 
This is interesting because in doing residential, we need a 122 40 volt single phase or split phase system set up if we're actually going to connect things together and make the make the distribution system work. So again, we're going to treat this residential project as a commercial project. We're going to add up receptacles like commercially we would with 180 VA per each and just kind of a hybrid here to, to teach how to do this. But we do have the, the 283 phase system and a 483 phase system like you'd use commercially, but we also have 120 volt single phase. So it's single phase, three wire, 240. So that is a good sign. We already have that in here. We don't need to add it. Now, whether we have a single phase panel, eh, we'll find that out later, but at least we have the system. And we can in here change things with, and we're okay with wiring sizes, but how wiring is shown. And when we get into wiring, we may come back here and change some of these things. But I mean, you can affect what the hot wire looks like, the ground wire, neutral, you know, is it slanted? Are we going to show tick marks always or just on home runs? So these kind of things we will be messing with as we go. This will also point out to you how important your template becomes. All right, enough of that. Let's go back to the, we only need electrical. We're going to go to electrical power plan to start with. And we'll see that it actually is empty. This is where we can bring our linked architectural model in. And you have to do it into a floor plan. If we were to try to do it from, and we don't have any drafting views, but if you had a drafting view open, you wouldn't be able to bring that in. So we need to be in a plan view or a, you know, a ceiling plan. And what we do is we just go up to, we, there's a couple places you can do this. You can go to manage links right here, manage links, and add one from there, a Revit link, because there's Revit, CAD links, we have images, all kinds of links. So you can do it from there, or you can go up to the insert up top, insert tab, and link Revit. We want to link a Revit, and we need to find that Basic sample project, not that one. Basic, there it is. Basic sample, it's the RAC for architectural. And we're going to link it. Now, there's a number of positioning things we can do. We used to bring things in internal origin to internal origin. But if you study origins and project base points and all that coordinate system stuff in Revit, you'll find that. Internal origins really don't mean much. The mo thing that means the most is that project base point. It establishes elevation. It establishes rotation with north from north. It establishes a north and south location. So I've been bringing things in base point to base point. Unless you have some kind of a fancy shared coordinate system, that typically will work. So that's what we're going to use, base point to base point. So there is the architectural model just brought in. And you'll see our template has some elevation markers, which you can delete, turn off, or whatever. But I just like to move these out of the way. And I do them by window because they're actually two pieces. So now if I do window this way, I'm I'm grabbing, I may be grabbing the model. And that's a good point to think about this model. There's the model. Let's pin that up here under modify. We're gonna hit the pin. We don't want that moving around. And then if we window. I can move that. Now you also have over here under under the modify, there's a select drop down. You have selection check marks. If you want to make sure you never select a link by accident, you can turn that off. And never want to select an underlay, never want to select a pinned element. You can do that. And that will keep you from accidentally, I can't even select that linked pinned model anymore. You can also get to those down at the bottom right. For select links, select underlays, and so the same controls are down at the bottom of your screen down here. But I'm going to get these guys out of the way. I don't need those showing up all the time. So that's the architectural file. And now, as you can see, I see everything here. Even if I hit ZA for zoom all, I get everything. Now, when I actually create floor plans, I don't need to see the entire site. Well, a couple things you can do here, escape out. 
you can get to the crop. There's a crop line here, crop view. Over here under extents on the right, there's a crop view. This just means that I want to actually crop the view, yes. And then the crop region, I want to see it. It draws the crop region box. And I can take this crop region box and I can drag this down. Now I'm cropping the model, not the grids. The grids are an annotative element that don't get cropped by this line. So I'm going to pull this in close to my wall. This guy, I don't need solar panels in my building floor plan. That's a site plan issue. Bring this in like this. Let's get how close we want some of that outdoors to show. So I'll just go to there. I'm lining up with this end of the building. And then the right one. Now, do I need all of this? I don't think I do for this plan. So I'm going to bring this clear in close to the wall. So there, now I've cropped out everything else. That's one way to crop a plan. But now if I jump into level two, it's not cropped. I have to do the same thing. I'll have to do the same thing to all my lighting plants as well. So there's a shortcut to this. Instead of using this manually adjusted crop view, we're going to use a thing called a scope box. I'm going to undo all that. We're going to go ahead and draw that scope box. That's under the view tab. It controls the view. And right here, scope box controls the visibility of datum elements, grids, levels, and reference in views. Yes, it does, but it also crops the view. So let's do that. And we're going to do a similar border. We're going to start here and just click it once. And then this drags as you move the cursor to there. Now that created a scope box. And over here, we have an opportunity to name it. We will call this, I like to call it something like building versus site. Apply that. So now we actually have a scope box and it's a 3D element. If we go down to this created 3D view that's already created, here we can see that this scope box is actually a 3D box and it can be dragged up and down too, but it looks like it encompassed our entire building. And so we're good there. I think even we may want to go a little lower just to be sure. So there. So now we have the scope box and it's named. Now we want to apply that scope box to this view that we're in. We're actually in power. So over here with this extent stuff, down here there's a place to assign our scope box. So we're going to assign the building scope box, apply, and there it went. Instantly cropped. And the benefit of that now is that when I go to my second floor, I can apply that scope box and it's instantly cropped exactly the same as the other floor. So you can see the power of that is it's kind of a like a template controlled cropping. So I'll do that with all of these. Now, one thing I'll mention on the ceiling plans here in a second. There's two different kinds of plans. We have a floor plan and a ceiling plan, and you can see they're both created here in this template. If you get into the nitty gritty of that, you'll see that a floor plan is looking down on the floor. A ceiling plan is looking up. Well, it's reflected, but it's as if you're looking up. So they display differently. They show different things. A ceiling plan, you can get to the ceiling to put lights. A floor plan, you can't. So what well, we've decided, our firm has decided to only use ceiling plans for lighting. Some firms may do both. They may do floor plan and ceiling plan. We like it all in one. So we don't even use these floor plans for lighting. I could just delete them, but I'll just close it for now. So we're going to be using the ceiling plans only, and we'll get into more of that later. The other thing I want to make sure is I have these things already made for level one, level two, but are my level one and level two at the proper place? Let us go to an elevation. There's already a south elevation created, and this is how you can see your levels. So as you can see over here, these end up being the architectural levels that were brought in, and it's kind of hard to see these with the scale. We can play with the scale to make it make these smaller. There we go. So we can see these levels, but we can't touch them because they're part of the linked model. Here's our levels. You can see I can actually highlight those. And level one and level two are just in my template. Let me drag these 
over so I can see them. Now, when you click on it, you'll notice there's, there's a tiny little circle. and even gets smaller sometimes. It's a tiny little circle that if you grab that grip and hold it, you can drag it around. Now, if I let go, if I let, let go, I, you know, I, I can't drag it. Now, if I was to drag it and continue dragging it beyond the edge of this view and now let go, I'm still dragging this while I'm letting go of my mouse. So now I can drag these all the way over somewhere where I can see them and line them up. Now, level one is at zero elevation and zero elevation. So these are already aligned. These match. Level two, ours is a little bit higher. This level two is not at 10 feet. It's at 3,000 millimeters. Now, again, I mentioned before that this model was done in millimeters. Our model will be done in feet and inches, and it's doing the conversion for us. But I want this level to match their level. Now, the way you can do that is to go up to Modify and find the Align tool, or there's a shortcut. As you see, after Align, it says AL. That's a keyboard shortcut built in. Instead of going to modify, we can also just click on the level and that automatically opens modify to get to there. Or we can just hit AL. I'll use the uh, ribbon for now. And a line works where it says, select the line or point reference for alignment, which means what do I want to align my, my stuff to? I want to go to this from, from a second, from there. So that pulls it down and aligns it. And no need to lock it. If it moves, we'll have to adjust it later. Another thing I show in my commercial videos is that our, our actual template only has one level, and we just copy and then monitor the architectural levels. But this is there's multiple ways to do it. If you want to have multiple views already set up in your template, then you need levels in your template to set these up. And I've seen some architects set up up to 10 floors in their architectural template. So, you know, there's always two or three ways to do things. So this is how you would do it if you already had the level. Now we do want a roof line. Again, I said it's nice sometimes to have an upper limit on views. So let's go ahead and put that roof line in. I also want to make sure my, my lines are extended and they're extended way over here, which is more than enough. Let's go ahead and add that. Now we can just right click on here and say, create similar. Or you can go up to architecture and add levels that way over here. But let's just right click, create similar. I'm gonna start, and I don't care the height right now, I'm gonna adjust it later. I can start, you can see as I get close to the end of that, it gives me a little dashed guideline to line them up. It's not critical, but I like to line them up. And then drag it way over, and then you can see my blue line lines up to line those up. And it gave it its own name. It just called it whatever. We can change that. Click on there and change this to roof line. If I can spell, there we go. Would you like to rename the corresponding views? No, I'll name those manually later. And then let's do the align. Align to there, from there, and you can see the conversion from millimeters to inches gets a little messy, but that's what we want. So now we have our three levels in our model, and let's go back and see. Level two was close already, so it's not going to change a lot. Another thing I'll point out right here is that this background architectural model automatically gets. Um, half toned and out of the box Revit is pretty light. Like right now, these seem fairly faint. These can be adjusted, and this get we you know, we adjust this in our own template. The way you get to that, go up to manage and under additional settings, there's a couple places of settings. We saw the MEP settings earlier, and then over here, there's object styles, which you can get to things like lines and, and line weights and all that kind of stuff. And then you can get to additional settings, which has more line styles and things. So there's a number of places that you'll have to get familiar with where settings are. We're going to go to one called halftone slash underlay. And this controls the transparency or brightness of these halftones. 
We're going to leave the underlay with the built-in pattern, but we want the brightness higher. Right now it's at 50. I'm going to suggest we go to 70. You can just type this in manually. You can also just drag it. So that is a little darker. If you want it darker, you can go to 80, whatever works for you. And then the real test is when you try to print this to a PDF or even to paper, what does it look like? We do want it somewhat dim because we want our electrical items to pop out. So that's how you can control that. Another thing that we do when we set up a project is see these grid lines. You know, architects use grid lines and, and, and structural use grid lines to show typically columns, um, walls. You know, they set up a grid pattern that's meaningful to help us identify where things are. So we want to mimic that. Now, we have no control over these grids. And maybe it doesn't matter. For most projects, it might not matter, but we've run into issues where it does matter, where this is in the way of a schedule, or, or I really want these, I'm zooming in here, and I want these bubbles over here. Well, I have no control over this at all. I'm at the mercy of the architect. So, like we did levels, we want to have our own grid system, and this is where we will actually copy the grids, rather than putting our own grids in and making them all align, it was fine with two or three levels, but with this many grids, I just want to copy these. The way we do that is actually under the Collaborate tab. We're collab, it's a kind of a collaboration to copy monitor someone else's link. So that's the way to think of it. Collaborate, there's a Copy Monitor button. And now, which project do you want to copy monitor from? Well, we only have one link. So we could say use a current, current project, but for good practice, let's go to select the link because eventually you may have structural, mechanical, plumbing links. So select the link, and this, even, even though you have don't select links here, this overrides that and lets me select a link in my project. So copy monitor, select link. It will let me select this link. So there I clicked on it. You couldn't see much, but I actually clicked on the link because now I have things I can do. I'm just going to go copy. Now, monitor is only monitor. If I do copy, it will copy and monitor. You'll find out. It's kind of confusing. They didn't say that. And then under here, we have another little menu. Copy monitor. We want to copy monitor multiple things at once. We don't want to have to pick them individually. So hit multiple. Now, I can use different windowing techniques to grab just the grid lines. I can start at the right and drag left, and you'll see I have a dashed window which is a crossing window. And you can see these high, highlight as I drag over them. You can do that. And then if I want to do another set, if I do this other set here, oh, the other first set's gone. I have to hold control down to add more sets. Now I can do this with everything. There's another way to do this. Escape out of that. Copy. Multiple. I'm going to window from, I can left to right, right to left get the whole project in here, and then use a little funnel. It's a filter. Filters are, are very powerful in Revit. Use a filter. It shows that I have floors, grids, and walls. Those are the categories I have selected and how many of each. I don't want to copy the walls. I don't want to copy floors. I only want to copy grids. So there's all 14 grids selected with one window and say, okay. So that narrows down my selection set to just grids. I need to finish the multiple selection. And then it kicks me out of copy monitor after it's done. So then it kicked me out. I'm still not done copy monitoring it, but it kicked me out. Who knows why? Go back to copy monitor. Now we can actually finish the copy. The first finish was to finish these multiple selection set. Second finish is to finish the copy. Now what you'll find is I can hover already over these and I have control now of my grids. Now they're, they're tied together right now. They're pinned together, locked together, which is, which is nice. I can control them individually later, but I have control now where these grids are. I have control on whether I show a bubble there or click on here and show the bubble here. Now, I don't want to move these around, but I can control their appearance. But I still see the architectural 
grids there as well. Well, we can turn those off. So now we're going to jump into a visibility slash graphics. You're going to eventually know this like the back of your hand. This is what controls most things in Revit. Not everything, because some things are controlled by phase and things like that. But most things are controlled by visibility graphics. If I go over here, I get this giant window. What's going on here? Visibility graphics override, and I'm for I'm in floor plan two. So I'm in level two. Showing all the model categories. There's also annotation categories and imported categories and Revit links. So we can get to all kinds of things. So you can get to all these categories. This is our model, controlling our model. We don't need to turn on and off our model grids. We want to turn off only the, the linked grids. So we need to go over here to Revit links. There's our link, architectural link. And it's already half tone, so we don't have to hit half tone again. The display settings for that link are by host view. What's the host view? Our model is hosting the linked model, so we are the host. Right now, our view is controlling grids. We want to turn off just the grids in the link. So here we go. There's a bunch of things you can do here. There's, like I mentioned, there's phase filters, detail levels, all this kind of stuff. We want to go to custom. And then we want to custom the annotation. And grids are annotations. So we want to customize the annotation view. Again, we need to go to custom. Because there's so many different things you can do here. There's a few levels. Now we are looking at, reminds you that we're in the Revit link display, not our model. We're in the link. And we're going to turn off grids. So go down here. You see all the different categories of annotations. Tags, 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 tags. There's all different kind of tags. Right here, grids. We can uncheck grids and say, okay, okay. Now the architectural model grids are off and all we see left are our grids. So now we can control our grids and where they are. I did this one here. Let's say I want it down here on all three of these. Now I have ultimate control on my grids and what it shows. So what else do we need to do? Well, we need to finish setting up our plans. We have our power plants set up and cropped. And we have ceiling plans set up and cropped. Now we need to control what do we see in each of these views. For example, first floor power. Similar to the scope box that let us apply a crop to every sheet, we can set up view down here, view templates, a templates for the appearance of these views that we can apply to other views. Right now it's just two views, two floor plans. I don't have any other plans. I may only have to set this up twice and I may not need to use a template for everything, but I think it's good practice to get used to setting up view templates for use. So we're going to do that. Now again, our project template, don't get confused project template versus view template. Our project template that we use has a number of view templates already set up. But even those need some tweaking when you have a linked model, unless you are starting from an actual project based template. So what we're going to do is do a view template. There's none assigned to this view right now. We're able to control everything, view range and everything from here. And that does bring up a good point is that we haven't dealt with view range yet. We will deal with that in this template. So we're going to look at templates. Now there's a few out of the box templates. We can, let's say if we try this architectural plan. So as you see, architectural plan has the same categories here as we do over here, but these are the settings within a template called electrical plan. So it's got, it's set up for eighth inch. And this column here called include tells you what's included in this template. Because sometimes you can not include things in your template for various reasons. So right now they haven't included any color schemes and, and underlay orientations in the view, in the view template. They're letting us control that with each view, but most things here are controlled in this view template so that we don't have to set them on every view. So we have our model overrides, annotation overrides, and you can see they're broken out instead of just one button, they've got individual ones, just as if you went to the individual tabs up here. 
So we have scale set. The detail level of this view is set here. Now, what is detail level? As we'll see, if your families look different depending on the level of detail you pick. There's a coarse, medium, and fine. On a coarse view, plumbing may look like a single line. Conduits may look like just a single line. But in fine view, they may look like a 3D pipe, 3D conduit with fittings, things like that. So that this one is set up for medium, and we can tweak that stuff. The overrides we just did on that Revit link are not set up in this. But let's just change the electrical plan and see what it does. It doesn't look a whole lot different. Now, they called it electrical plan, not power plan, not lighting plan. So this template is set up to show anything electrical all in one plan. Now, that does bring up a good point as to how many different plans do we want and we will, what do we want to see on each? I think architects, if they were doing a, uh, an electrical plan, they would put power and lighting and even, you know, technology, teledata, things like that, all on one view, one plan. Because they're not going to the level of detail on that that we would as electrical designers. So that's why we are breaking this up into a separate power plan and a separate ceiling plan for lights. And we would even could even have a separate technology plan if we want. Sometimes we'll combine technology with power. Again, it's a decision on how you want to set up your set of plans. It boils down to we don't want lighting showing up on a power plan. So we need to turn these lights, and these are lights in the architectural model, we need to turn those off. Long story short, we're not going to use the built-in view templates. We're going to set up our own. So let's get out of this electrical plan. We want none. We don't want that view template. We are going to create our own. And what I like to do is set things up the way I like, and then I create a view template from that view. So like, for example, in Power Plan, if I right click, I can go to create view template from this view. So once I have everything set up, I can create a view template and use that view template on the other power plants. So that's how we're going to approach this. So let's get this one set up the way we like. Now what happened is when I switched over to the electrical template, it undid what I had just done for my architectural. So keep that in mind too. If you switch to other view templates, a view template is going to counteract what you had done because my, what I did was not in a view template. So we have to redo that. The other thing that can happen, usually commercially, is you might see other architectural things that you want to turn off. I don't see it here, but sometimes they'll have an ADA door surround, that little dash line that shows the ADA clearance. And we don't typically need that on our door, so we could turn that off. So there may be other architectural things we want to turn off. But we're going to quickly go through and just redo this as practice. We want to go to the Revit link. We want to make it custom. We want to customize the annotations. And we want to go down to grid and turn the grids off. So we just redid what we did before. But as you know, the more you practice, the better you get. So those are off. Now we want to turn the lights off. So let us go and turn those lights off. Now, I could turn the lights off here and it would turn off in the Revit link. However, we are going to apply custom to the model categories as well in our Revit link. So now we're not going to be controlled by the host anymore. So we do have to turn them off here. So we want to turn off, while we're at it, let's turn off any electrical equipment, any electrical fixtures. Any fire alarm. And let's turn off. There is no mechanical equipment in here, but you can turn off a lot of things in the architectural model that you don't want to see. Sometimes you want to turn off this. There's one that jumps out at me as entourage. This guy has people and vehicles, things like that. Well, we don't really need to see those. They're not on our way. We'll leave them on for now. But sometimes if they put little people inside the building, we don't want those showing. So let's go down to our lighting, lighting devices and lighting fixtures. We'll turn those off here. 
Now, when we get to the lighting plan, it'll be a different story, and we'll talk about that when we get there. But we don't want lights on our power plan. We're going to leave furniture on because we may want to align some power devices like receptacles. Maybe we want some floor boxes underneath some of the furniture or things like that. So we'll leave that on for now. It's nice to know where the television is planned to go so we can get facilities for that. So I think that's a good setup for the power plan. So let us now, an eighth inch is a good scale for us. We're going to create that view template now. Create a view template. Well, it wants us to save the project, and that's fine. I haven't given it a name yet. So let's go ahead and, and that's not, I don't want it under XREF, I want it under electrical. We're going to call this tutorial residential. I like to call it electrical. And I like to give it the version R23. All that in the name. And I only need one backup. There we go. Good idea to get that saved early on and named properly. Your office, if you're in an office, may have your own naming convention. Now, I'm jumping back into my Creative View template. So I'm going to call this ER for Electric Rob. I like to give it a name in front of it. We're going to call it Power Plan because it's not lighting. And I'm going to give it the scale because scale is baked into this. So now I have ER power plan. Good. Now it doesn't always assign it yet. So now I need to also assign it to ER power plan. There. Now that this has a view template, I cannot make changes here. All of this is grayed out. Anything that's tied to that view template now, I cannot change here. Now we saw some of the color schemes and stuff wasn't tied to that, but things like view range is you, I can't even get to that button. So the view range now is controlled by the view template and to change anything view range, I have to go into the template and then change it here. View range is here now. So you can see all this stuff is brought back in. I can't change the detail level. It's grayed out. So that's what's going on there. It means it's template controlled, but that does mean that I can jump into my level two power plan and assign this view template ER power plan and everything's controlled by that. Now let's get into the view range issue and perhaps let's cut a section. Let's go to the power plan and let's cut a section through here. The way we can do that is up top in the quick access bar we can go to section and this is really handy to just cut a section wherever you want. Start there and drag this over try to keep it parallel and then if I double click on the pointy head there it opens up a section and it opens up a section and it's a discipline called electrical if we had electrical devices in here it would show all of them in like a like a x-ray vision but let's look at that so as we're looking at view range now we see that these two levels have different tops this may affect us more when we get into lighting because the roof line that they've established may be the, where the eaves are. In fact, let's, let's go here and cut another section. Um, let's cut a section this way. Yeah, see, so the roof line is up here at the bottom, the start of the roof. The second story has a lot of vaulted area above it that may cause problems with our lighting. So we'll have to adjust that. There may be something we need to deal with if there's any kind of fan, ceiling fans hanging up there. So we'll have to keep an eye on that and see if we need to adjust. And what would that do with our view template? That means we may need separate view templates for level one and level two. That happens a lot commercially. A lot of times level one is taller. It's the opposite here. We can do that, you know, again, with only two views, it changes really how much we need to worry about view templates because if we only have one view that uses that template why have a template the template's made really for duplicating the same view elsewhere but it's good practice to get used to the other thing you can do is we could actually disconnect the view range pull it out of the template and let 
each floor dictate its own view range. And again, depending on the situation, that may be the choice. A couple different choices. Getting ahead of myself, we're going to be fine with this for now. So the last thing I want to do as far as setting this model up to get started is dealing with the work sharing issue. Now, you may have heard that Revit has a work sharing option that allows multiple users to be in the same Revit model working on it at the same time, which is pretty ingenious if you think about the old CAD systems where only one person at a time could be in it. So we don't really need that set up. If you're just a you know sole proprietor working on this project by yourself, you have no one else dealing with you, no one else in your project, you may not need it. Now, if you do use things called work sets, we can't see them here, but it works sets for visibility or for turning things on and off or possibly for performance issues, then it needs to be a work shared project. We're going to use filters to turn things on and off here instead of work sets. I'm trying to work more into the filter line of thinking. So you may not need it, but I like to do it. We use it commercially in our firm, so I want to show how that's done so it gives you a complete picture. If you don't need it, you can skip this. But the way you do it is you go up to the Collaborate tab, and it looks like I'm already there. And there's a, over here, Collaborate, and then there's Work Sets. So we want to hit the Collaborate tab. We need to save the model before we can collaborate. All right, that's fine. We can save it. It wants to make sure we have the latest and greatest. Now, collaborate. You can collaborate within your own network or out in the cloud. Now, you need to have a special, typically a special license to do this cloud collaboration, and you know firms do that kind of thing. But for us, we're going to go within our own network. Okay. And right now, behind the scenes, it's just doing its crunching to make it collaborate. On a larger model, it'll take a while because... It looks at each view and things like that. So if you have a you know a 10-story building, it's going to take a while. This was quicker. Now, it didn't do much, but it's set up. But before we can actually use that collaboration as such, we need to save this as what's called a central model. And the central model will live somewhere on the network, a central location. We put it on our main file server so that other people can get to it. So let us go ahead and save it. And I hit save as project, not cloud project. And I'm resaving what I'd already done. But now it's going to be saved as a central model. And the options, look at that. It wants, to, it wants to give me 20 backups. Well, I'm fine with one because we do our own nightly backup. And just say OK. And hit save. And I'm just saving over the old single model. Now I'm putting in a central file, central model. So collaborate, set up work sharing, save it as a central model, and then get out of it. Now when I reopen it, you'll see I have some new options. So let's go to tutorial, residential, electrical, not the backup with the 0 .0001. Now down here, you'll see some new work sharing options. Create new local. That just means it's going to take that central model on the server. It's going to create a copy of it onto my local hard drive for me to edit. And every now and then we're going to sync with each, synchronize with each other so that I get the latest updates from the central that maybe somebody else is doing and central gets my updates. So that's the collaboration part. We don't want to detach this. That's another step that we do for other reasons later that we'll cover. But for now, we want to create new local. So every time we open this, we want to make sure we open it from the server and that we do create a new local because the old local will still be on your local hard drive. You do not want to open that because now you have an old version of your file. So that's how work sharing works. Other than that, it's pretty transparent. You'll see down at the bottom now we have this thing called work set. This is a way to divide your work up into further categories, if you will. Not quite layers, but it, it, it segregates things into pieces. So in a large model, you may want to have half the building on one work set, the other half on the other, so you can turn it off and not affect performance. 
A lot of people use it, and we used to use it for visibility control. I'd put my site stuff on a site work set so I can turn it off on my building. We've learned that using filters is a better approach for various reasons, which we'll cover in the filter lesson. But for now, you'll see that it puts your username on here. Mine's just email address. It'll put your username up there, and that lets you know that you're working in a local file. And now instead of just save, you get a button next to it called synchronize. So if I hit synchronize now, it is synchronizing my local file with the central file. And of course, nowadays, a lot of firms will put a central model in the cloud that multiple physical geographically remote locations can get to and collaborate on through the internet. So the last few things I'd like to do to get this model set up for this first lesson is go to my ceiling. I want to do the same type of things with the grid here. And remember, I have not assigned a view template to this yet. So let's go ahead and practice. We'll go to the same thing. We're going to the Revit links. And I can do it here now because I don't have a view template. So I'm doing this first, and then I will create a template from it. And we want to make this custom. We want to make the annotation custom. And we want to turn off grids. Okay, okay. So those are turned off now. I have my own grids like we talked about before. Now, what about lighting? Eventually, I'm going to be bringing my own lights into my model. Now, some people might think, well, why not just use the Arctic's lights? Well, we are going to connect our lights electrically. We can't do that with a linked light. Furthermore, even if we could, architects typically link in lights that have no electrical connections. That's not their thing. So we are going to be reproducing our own lighting families into here. Now, also, what level of detail do we want those? As electrical designers and engineers, we are not creating a rendering kind of atmosphere for this model. We are just it's diagrammatic, mostly. We want it for the electricians to know how to connect things up. So we don't care that it's ultimately, you know, beautiful visually. We get close, but we mainly are looking for things to connect. So we're not going to need the architectural lights on in our model when we produce it. We may want them on in the interim to help us line our fixtures up with theirs. So what we can do is we can turn them off in our, what I would call production view or sheet view, the view that gets dragged into our construction documents. But we can have them on in yet another view that we can create. We can create as many views as we want with different things showing. We can create a working or coordination view that has their lights on. So we will get into that. Right now we're going to set up our, our production view, our sheet view. So we're going to turn those off. So again, we're in the Revit links. Make sure you're in the Revit link. And we have custom set up. Now we're in the Revit link display settings. And to the model category, we need to make that custom as well. And then down here, again, we're going to be turning off electrical stuff, fire alarm stuff. And then we want to turn off the lighting devices, lighting fixtures. Okay. So now those are turned off. So in our production view, we're not going to see those. Let's go ahead and create that view template. The way we do that again, right click, create view template from this view. And our new name, ER Lighting Ceiling, 8th inch. To remind us it's a ceiling plan. And it looks good. And then we want to assign it to the ER lighting ceiling. And then we also want this one to be the same. We may adjust the view range later. That gets us started. The last thing I'll do here is I like to rename these views. Now, when I drag these onto a sheet eventually, I can give them their own name on that sheet that shows up in the title block down below. But I still like for my own, you know, 
organization and for helping us as we go through. I like to change these things, rename. Now, the number in front helps them sort. And I've used things like, you know, zero, zero dot ones and things like that. But for a simple project, the one and two works. So I'm going to leave it as two. Now, you can call it floor plan, ceiling plan, whatever you want. It's based on a ceiling plan and it looks up at the ceiling, but electrically we often call these just lighting plans or floor plans lighting because sometimes we'll show lighting that's not on the ceiling. It may be under cabinet. It may be you know, on the edge of the floor, things like that. So it's really a floor plan for lighting, but call it whatever you like, what makes sense for you. And let's go, I'm going to go first floor plan. You could call it level one lighting, level two. And frankly, a lot of this has to do with the architect you're working with and what they're calling their plans, make things match. Power. Again, your company may have its own naming conventions. Okay. Now, the 3D view, we're not setting up yet. We may do that later as we go. But for now, we've got the basic plans, the basic views that we need to start doing some electrical work. So, this concludes the first lesson, which is setting up your electrical model, getting the architectural linked in, and setting up your views. So stay tuned for part two.